Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habati fillah one of the ways that we can increase our rizq is by being pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with and the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us by being pleased seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not giving up on Allah azza wa jal and being pleased with his decree and the prophet alayhi salatu was salam said inna Allah ta'ala yubtilu abduhu bima atahu faman radiya bima qasam Allah azza wa jal lahu barakallahu lahu fi wa wasa'ahu wa man lam yarda Lem Yubarak Lahu. And this is a hadith uh, Imam al Albani declared as Sahih in his Silsila as Sahiha. Uh, in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see the dalil, the evidence uh, of how the mu'min should be uh, pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever that decree is. And that's from Iman. As, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, uh, as a pillar of Iman, and to be uh, to believe in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine decree, the good of it and the bad of it. Meaning that there are things that are sweet and there's things that are going to be sour. Things that are difficult for us and things that are easy for us and that we're pleased with. And there will be challenges, things that we might not know the divine wisdom behind it. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Verily Allah the Almighty test his servant with what he gives them. Whoever is pleased with the uh, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless him in it with it. And who and and increase it. And whoever is displeased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has given, then Allah will not give him blessings in that. Uh, Allama Abdul Rauf al Manawi rahimahullah ta'ala said, In Allah ta'ala yubtali. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test, and this is the first uh, ibara or statement in the hadith. He said, This means to test, yamtahan wa yukhtabir, you know, to test. And try people so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries his servants. And he tries them with regards to their wealth, to their rizq. And whoever is pleased with it, meaning that they're pleased with the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them from it, or the divisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's provisions, Allah will bless them with it and, uh, and increase them. And whoever is displeased with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uh, bless them in that. <clears throat> Imam Asafarini, Asafarini, he mentioned about this, he said, مطلوب, uh, oh, مطلب, he said, رضا يثاب عليه ويزيد في رزق. He said that the pleasure, you know, by, by uh, being pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, that the person will be rewarded for it, meaning rewarded with good, and Allah will increase them in the risk. He will increase their provisions. And which one of you does not want their provisions increased? And he also mentions that this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hakimun Arim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all wise and all knowing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Well, Hakim. So he said that Hakim, you know, this, this wisdom means to put things in its proper place. This is what we, when we refer to Hikmah, for example, when you listen to the scholars and you go back to the Arabic language, you see that the, the meaning of Hikmah is to put things in its proper place. This is wisdom, which is different than uh, knowledge, so to, so to speak. But this is wisdom. Wisdom is to put everything in its proper and appropriate place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hakimun Alim. He is the all-wise and the all-knowing. 
And then he says, فَمَنْ عِبَادِهِ مَنْ لَمْ يَصْلَحُ إِلَّا الْفَقْرِ وَلَوْ أَغْنَاهُ لَفَسِدَ عَلَيْهِ دِينِهِ So this is very important and it's, it's difficult for us to, to uh, comprehend at times or, you know, we don't know the divine wisdom. Imam Safarini, he says, that from them, meaning some of the, uh, from the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are those who it, is n it would not be uh, something that would rectify them or good for them other than their poverty. And if they were given wealth, they would be destroyed by it in regards to their religion. Meaning that there are some people and this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine wisdom. When we look at the creation, most of the creation is poor. Most of the people uh, live under the poverty line, whatever you consider the poverty line. Most, most of the world is poor, is extremely poor. And there are those people that it, when they are given wealth, become wealthy, they become arrogant, they, they become destructive, or... They forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They forget their deen, if they even had a deen in the first place. So here, the imam is mentioning that some people, that they are, uh, that this is a part of the, the, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a part of the decree of Allah wa ta'ala, that they are in poverty, and that if they were given wealth, they would actually be destructive towards their own religion. They would, they would destroy themselves or destroy, it would destroy their deen because of, you know, maybe they would indulge in sinfulness, whatever the case may be. And then he says, وَمَنْ هُمْ مَنْ مَنْ لَا يَصْلَحُ إِلَّا الْغِنَى And then there are some of them that the only thing appropriate for them is wealth. That because if they became poor, it would destroy their deen. Because there are some people that they're not as strong. But Allah is favored with them wealth, and they do some good with that wealth. Or that the fact of them having wealth, this makes it easier for them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from kufr and ma'asi. So some people, everyone's on a different level of iman. You find some people, for example, that when they're tried with something, they're shaken. You know, they're really, uh, especially with regards to the wealth, some people, they can take that easy on the chin. Oh, I lost my job. I did this. I did this. And they're still strong in Iman. Some people, they, it's like the whole world has been destroyed for them, depending on the level of their Iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't test them in the same way as someone else has tested. And Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned some great fawaid. He said, regarding the being pleased with the uh, the decree and the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, He said that, that being pleased with the decree of Allah is of three, uh, three types or in three different ways. So he says the first way that uh, a person is pleased with the decree of Allah is that they are pleased by uh, with doing ta'at, by doing, uh, you know, with the decree of Allah, they, they increase in worship. They become more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that this act or these actions are what we're commanded with. This is the ta'at. Or this is the ta'a that we're ordered with. I mean, we're commanded to do that. We're commanded to do this. So this is a wajib. This is an obligation upon us that when we're tested, we should increase our, our worship. He says, Wathani, the second, he says, Arda bi masaib fahada ma'murun bi. Imma mustahabun wa imma al wajib. So uh, then Shaykh al Islam mentioned the second way in which people react, if you will, to the. Uh, to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the rida bi masaib is the one who is who is when they're tested that they're pleased with the test rida whatever, whatever happens they still go back to Allah and they're just like alhamdulillah Allah tested me with this I'm going to make it through 
walhamdulillah. They're pleased with that uh, masa'ib. And he says that this, uh, and he said, and this is also commanded. And then he said, however, he said regarding the hukum, regarding the ruling, regarding, he said, imma mustahabun wa imma wajib. Either as something which is uh, uh, recommended, meaning it's, 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 uh, it's, it's recommended that you're pleased with this in this way, or that it's a command, that it's wajib, it's an obligation. So it just depends on the particular issue. Let me give you an example. So for example, the person who loses their child, and we all, for those people who have children, they know how devastating, especially when they're small children, but anytime, but especially small children, that, uh, you know, you're usually unprepared for that. And so they, to lose one of your small loved ones, this is Alim, this is great. So, uh, you know, this is very devastating. And so the person who has Rada, the, uh, Rada you know, they, they, they were pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they could accept this either by, you know, just saying, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, you know, my Lord, this is from His divine wisdom, you know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and their heart is comforted with Iman. This is like a high level. This is the mustahab, this is the recommended, but not most people aren't on that level. Then there's the one that's, there's the wajib of that, meaning the one they say, Alhamdulillah, la kulli hal, maybe they're hurt, they're devastated, they're just going to struggle through it, but they're not going to be, pull their hair out, they're not going to destroy themselves, they're not going to go to disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this. So this is the wajib, this is an obligatory reaction with that. Then he mentions the third way that people react. And since this has taken longer, I was going to mention what Ben Othamin and what some of the other great uh, Emma mentioned, which is just full of fawa'id, but this maybe will suffice us. He says, the third way is al-kufr wal-fusuq wal-isyan fahadha la yu'mar yu'mar bi radabi bel yu'mar bi bughduhu wa sakhduhu fa inna allaha la yuhibbuhu wa la yardahu Uh, so then Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions the third way that people react to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is through uh, kufr, by disbelieving, uh, and, and, and fusuk, and, and wickedness, and, and wicked sin, and isyan, and, and, and you, know, uh, you know, maybe wicked, and wicked sins, by doing sins, and being oppressive, and all these kind of things. He said, this is not commanded with, meaning we're not commanded to react to, in this way. People are not commanded with this type of uh, acceptance, if you will, uh, of the decree of Allah. Because this is not really accepting. This is going, this is reacting in the worst of ways, either through disbelieving or just sinfulness and wickedness. And he said, rather, the person is commanded with detesting this type of reaction. Now, you should detest going back to kufr. You should detest being displeased with the decree of Allah. You should detest, uh, you know, you should hate being, getting, falling into sin and wickedness. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ كُفْرٍ وَإِسْيَانٍ وَالْمَعَاسِ وَفَصُوكٍ وَالنِّفَاقِ آمين يا رب العالمين والنار آمين and the wrath, and he said that, and that Allah the Almighty does not love this, nor is he pleased with this, this type of reaction to his divine decree. And the, the ulama, they mention many things in, in relation to what was already encapsulated in the statement of Shaykh al-Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our fears, all of our affairs easy. And bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat, wa sunnah, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to come closer to him with our various trials and tribulations and struggles. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the Muslimin everywhere, bless them and relieve them from their struggle. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala relieve our brothers and sisters in China from the various types of oppression and evil that we can't even imagine that's happening to them. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters who are struggling under the bombs and in the, the, the trials and tribulations in Yemen 
and in Burma and wherever they're being oppressed and wherever the Muslims are, are struggling. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And all over the continent of Africa, Amin, and Asia, and everywhere, and in Europe, and in America, and wherever the Muslims struggle, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.